Application layer protocols are a set of rules and standards that govern the communication between applications over a network. They operate at the highest layer of the Internet Protocol Suite, which is responsible for end-to-end -end communication and user interface functionalities. In this video, we'll cover all the essential application layer protocols from core communication, email-related, and real-time communication to file transfer protocols that are mostly used in system design interviews. To start, let's understand the client-server model, which is the fundamental architecture of the Internet, where a client requests resources or services, and a server provides them. This model is at the core of network programming and web app development. But of course, servers can also communicate with other servers, and the client isn't always the end user, it's often just another program reaching out for data. These data transmission rules are set by application protocols that dictate how data is transmitted and received over a network. The most common protocol out of this is HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is built on TCP IP. It's a request-response protocol, but imagine it as a conversation with no memory. Each interaction is separate, with no recollection of the past. This means that the server doesn't have to store any context between requests, Instead, each request contains all the necessary information. And notice how the headers include details like URL and method, while body carries the substance of the request or response. Each response also includes the status code, which is just to provide feedback about the result of a client's request on a server. For instance, 200 series are success codes. These indicate that the request was successfully received and processed. 300 series are redirection codes. These signify that further action needs to be taken by the user agent in order to fulfill the request. 400 series are client error codes. These are used when the request contains bad syntax or cannot be fulfilled. And 500 series are server error codes. This indicates that something went wrong on the server. We also have a method on each request. The most common methods are get, post, put, patch, and delete. Get is used for fetching data. Post is usually for creating a data on server. Put and patch are for updating a record. And delete is for removing a record from database. HTTP is one-way connection, but for real-time updates, we use web sockets that provide a two-way communication channel over a single long-lived connection, allowing servers to push real-time updates to clients. This is very important for applications requiring constant data updates without the overhead of repeated HTTP request response cycles. It is commonly used for chat applications, live sport updates, or stock market feeds where the action never stops and neither does the conversation. From email-related protocols, SMTP is the standard for email transmission over the Internet. It is the protocol for sending email messages between servers, most email clients use SMTP for sending emails and either IMAP or POP3 for retrieving them. IMAP is used to retrieve emails from a server, allowing a client to access and manipulate messages. This is ideal for users who need to access their emails from multiple devices. POP3 is used for downloading emails from a server to a local client, typically used when emails are managed from a single device. Moving on to file transfer and management protocols, the traditional protocol for transferring files over the internet is FTP, which is often used in website maintenance and large data transfers. It is used for the transfer of files between a client and server, useful for uploading files to server or backing up files. And we also have SSH or Secure Shell, which is for operating network services securely on an unsecured network. It's commonly used for logging into a remote machine and executing commands or transferring files. There are also real-time communication protocols like WebRTC, which enables browser-to-browser -browser applications for voice calling, video chat, and file sharing without internal or external plugins. This is essential for applications like video conferencing and live streaming. Another one is MQTT, which is a lightweight messaging protocol, ideal for devices with limited processing power and in scenarios requiring low bandwidth, such as IOT devices. And AMQP is a protocol for message-oriented middleware, providing robustness and security for enterprise-level message communication. For example, it is used in tools like RabbitMQ. 
Let's also talk about RPC, which is a protocol that allows a program on one computer to execute code on a server or another computer. It's a method used to invoke a function as if it were a local call, when in reality the function is executed on a remote machine. So it abstracts the details of the network communication, allowing the developer to interact with remote functions seamlessly as if they were local to the application. And many application layer protocols use RPC mechanisms to perform their operations. For example, in web services, HTTP requests can result in RPC calls being made on backend to process data or perform actions on behalf of the client. Or SMTP servers might use RPC calls internally to process email messages or interact with databases. Of course, there are numerous other application layer protocols, but the ones covered here are among the most commonly used and essential for web development. And if you'd like to dive deeper, I recommend you check out this video about networking essentials.